Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the uh, International A Level Pure Mathematics P4 at Excel exam from June 2021. Here we have a question about a curve which is defined by these parametric equations x equals 2 cosine 2t and y equals 4 sine of t and the value of t is between 0 and pi over 2. As the region R shown shaded in figure 3 is bounded by the curve, the x-axis and the y-axis. Show making your working clear that the area of R is equal to the integral between 0 and pi over 4 of 32 sine squared t cosine t with respect to t. Um, so we'll do that first and then we'll find the actual area. So let's first of all see what we have here we have a parametric equation so the equation is not defined as y being some function of x it's defined as in a parametric way where you have a third parameter t that helps to define it okay so now we have to know how to integrate something which is defined parametrically now when we integrate something so the region r its area of r is going to be given by the integral between the limits between, you can say, x1 and x2 of the function y with respect to x. That's how you would normally integrate. So if we knew uh, what y was in terms of x, and we integrated that between the limits of this when x equals 0 and x equals whatever value this is going to be, okay, which we can find if we, if we need to, and we integrate y, if we had a function of y as a function of x, that would give us this area. However, we don't have the function in terms of x. We can do, we can make it in terms of x if we want to and find the area, but they want us to do it using t. All right, and it's generally easier when you're given something in parametric form to to, to find the, the area, or the, you know, under, in terms of t. So what I'm going to do here in terms of the third parameter, which in this case is t, I'm going to write y dx, instead of y dx, I'm going to put y dx dt dt. You can think about it almost like these dt's cancel out eventually. But this will also give us the area. However, we must change the limits now in terms of t's instead of x's. Because it's being integrated with respect to t. So I have to change the limits with re in, in terms of t values instead of x values. That will give us the area of this so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sub replace everything. Now I know that y is equal to 4 sine t. All right, so I'm going to put that here. So I have r equals. I'll just write this as t2 and t1 for now. And put those in later. But y is equal to 4 sine t. So you have 4 times the sine of t. Okay, then I have to put dx dt here. Now dx dt, I know x equals 2 times cosine of 2t. So when I int differentiate this, sorry, with respect to t, um, you know that the cosine of something becomes negative sine of something. That's going to be minus, and that's going to be the sine of 2t. Okay, and then I have the 2 outside already, and I have to multiply that by the differential of what's inside the function. So it's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. So it's minus 4 times sine 2t. So this would be minus 4 times sine of 2t with respect to t. Okay, let me just simplify what's inside here and then I'll deal with the limits afterwards. Now, first of all, I have 4 times 4, which is minus 16. So I'm going to have t1, t2. That's going to be negative 16. I'll have sine t times. Now, the sine of 2t by the... Uh, identity is the same as sine 2 sine t cosine t it's like sine t plus t using the double angle formula basically the addition formula okay uh, on which this double angle formula is derived from you end up with sine 2 t equals 2 sine t cosine t something that you should know so this is times 2 sine t cosine t and that's with respect to t so i can say r is equal to Minus 16 times 2, which is minus 32. So you have minus 32, and you've got um, sine squared t, sine squared t, cosine t with respect to t, and I have t2 and t1. Now I've got to find what these limits are. 
Now T2 and T1 are these limits here. So T1 is, um, let's say, the point where, um, you know, this is going to be where x equals 0. Okay. And this is, this is where x equals 0. So when x equals 0, so one of the points, let's say T1, T1 is when x equals 0. So if what, I want to find the value of t when x equals 0. So I can replace the x in this with 0. So I have 2 times cosine 2t equals 0. So 2 times cosine 2t equals 0. So cosine of 2t equals 0. Now we want to use the limits of t. Here we got t is between 0 and pi over 2. So if t is between 0 and pi over 2, here we have 2t, so we have to change this to 2t and pi. So cosine of 2t equals 0. Now we've got to do this in terms of radians. Always use radians when we are uh, doing integration and differentiation. So if 2t equals 0, uh, cosine 2t equals 0, 2t equals, well the cosine curve as we know goes like this, between 0 and pi it equals 0 at pi over 2. That's pi over 2, so t is equal to pi over 4. So I know that t1 is equal to pi over 4. And now I'm going to find what t2 is. Well, two t2 is, is going to be um, this section, uh, sorry, x2, or t2, I guess, which is where x is going to be, this x value, this is when y equals 0. This is the point where y equals 0. So we're going to put y equals 0, so that's 4 sine t equals 0, 4 sine t equals 0, so sine t equals 0, so t equals 0, okay, between 0 and pi, pi over 2, that's the, that's the time when t is equal to 0, so I'm going to have here, okay, I'm going to use the next page to continue, okay, continuing on from where we left off, we found that t1 is pi over 4, t2 equals 0, um, so we have r equals the integral of, we're going to have t1 is pi over 4, t2 is 0, minus 32 sine squared t cosine t with respect to t. And um, the answer isn't like this. The answer is, this is actually the answer that we had to show, which is, is, is repeated here. So we can see that this has got positive 32 sine squared t cosine t with respect to t but you see the difference between this and this is the limits are the other way around here so if we swap the limits then this will give us the opposite sign answer so basically we can say therefore r is equal to if we swap the limits you have pi over 4 and 0 and then you've got 32 sine squared t cosine t with respect to t and there we have shown what we had to show Okay, so there's the answer to A part 1. Now, A part 2 says, Hence, find by algebraic integration the exact value of the area of R. So basically, we have to just integrate this with these limits, and that will give us the area of R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the 32 outside the integral sign. Okay, I like to separate the constant out. And I can see here, I have something of the form f of x times the differential of f of x. Okay, because this is like sine t squared. You can think of sine squared t as sine t squared. What's the differential of sine t? Well, it's cosine t. So it's like you're multiplying the function by its differential. So this is a classic example of the uh, reverse of the chain rule. Okay, the reverse of the chain. When you differentiate a function, you, you differentiate the function as a whole, and then you multiply that by the differential what's inside the function. This is an example of the reverse of that. So if I take this and I start integrating, so I'll change this to a bracket now. Um, so I'm going to, to this is a something of the form where you have a bracket squared. So to integrate something in that form, you're going to increase the power by 1 divide by the new power so this is this is what we've got here sine squared sine t i like to write this next to it increase the power by one divide by the new power and then divide by the differential of what's inside the function so the differential of sine t is cosine t what you notice is they cancel out 
So you're left with sine t all cubed over 3 times 32. And the limits are pi over 4 and 0. So that's going to give me 32 over 3. Okay, I just take the 3 out here. And then I've got sine. Now I'm going to put pi over 4 cubed minus I've got sine pi sorry sine 0 cubed that's going to give you my integral because I put pi four, pi over 4 into here and then I'm going to put 0 into here and that 3 I've taken outside there so you've got 32 over 3 times now the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 so you've got root 2 over 2 cubed minus the sine of 0 is 0 so it's going to be minus 0. Now, if you cube 32 over 3, if you cube root 2, you're going to get basically, um, you're going to have 2 root 2. And if you cube 2, you're going to get 8. Okay, so we can see here, 8 goes into 32 four times. Um, so we're left with um, 4 times 2, which is 8. So you have 8 over 3 times root 2 and there's the answer that's the area of r okay in exact form and that's what they asked us to find wasn't it find the exact value of the area so you don't round it you leave it in third form okay so there's the answer to question 6a part 2 okay now for question 6b it says show that all points on the curve C satisfy the equation y equals the square root of ax plus b, where a and b are constants to be found. So basically what they're asking us to do here is to change this from this parametric form into what's called Cartesian form, which is when you express y in terms of x. So the way to do it in this type of question is to try to link these together by some sort of identity, especially when you've got these trig functions involved so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to say okay taking this first equation the cosine of 2t i can express that as x over 2 and the sine of t rearrange this is y over 4 now how can i link the cosine of 2t and the sine of t well i know that one of my identities that you should know especially from studying p3 is that the cosine of 2t is equal to 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of t. That's one of the identities that we should know. Okay, there's also cosine of 2t is equal to 2 cosine squared t minus 1. But this is the one that we need because we, we want to put a cosine of 2t in there in terms of 1 of x or y and a sine of t in there. So I can see that the cosine of 2t is x over 2. So I'll write this as x over 2 equals 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of t, which is like sine t all squared. So it's 2 times y over 4, and that's squared. That, that part is squared. So now we have got rid of the t from our uh, parametric equation. It's now become a Cartesian equation, but I want to express it in the form that they said, where y is the subject. So I have to rearrange this. So let me first square that bracket. So you have x over 2 min, um, equals sorry, 1 minus 2 times y squared over 16. If I multiply both sides, well, I can cancel this actually first. That gives me y squared over 8. So if I multiply both sides by 8, okay, I'll get rid of this fraction. This will be 8 times x over 2, which is 4x, equals 8 times 1, which is 8. Don't forget to multiply each term. And y squared over 8 times 8 is y squared. Okay, so now I can make y squared the subject. So I say y squared is equal to 8 minus 4x. So therefore, we can say y is equal to the square root of 8 minus 4x. So that's exactly what we had to show in this form, ax plus b. So we can say here, for example, that a is minus 4 and the b is equal to 8. Okay, so we've expressed it in this form and there's the answer to part b. Now for part c. Okay, it says the curve has equation y equals f of x, where f is a function, um, f of x equals ax plus b. So we know that f of x is equal to, as we said, the square root of 8 minus 4x. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so that's a and b. But the x values are between minus 2 
and 2. That domain is restricted between these values. Okay, so we've got to find the range. So the range depends on the domain. So the range is between minus 2 and 2. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a look at the graph. Okay, we can see the graph here. What I'll do is I'll just bring a copy of that down so we can see it better. Okay, so here's a copy of the graph here. So basically, we know that when, <coughs> when y equals 0, x equals 2. So that's the point here. Okay, when y equals 0, if you put y equals 0, you're going to have 8 minus 4x under the square root. You square both sides. 0 equals 8 minus 4x. And then you can see here that 4x equals 8. So x equals 2. And this curve stops when x is minus 2. That's where it stops when x is minus 2. Okay, so the domain of the curve is between here and here. That means the range of the curve is between there and there. So the range of the curve is between 0 and this point here, which we have to find. How do we find that? Well, if we put x equals 2 into the equation, x equals minus 2, sorry, into this equation. Okay, so therefore you have f minus 2 is equal to the square root of 8 minus 4 times minus 2. So it's the square root of 16, which is equal to 4. Okay, so of course that's positive 4. So this is the range of f. f is between 0 and 4. The range is the values it can take on the y axis. So the range goes from there to there, which is from 0 to 4. Okay, from 0 to 4, that's the range. Okay, so there's the answer to part C. It's only worth one mark. But just to, I went through that just to explain to you. You have to, the, the, the range depends on the domain. If it didn't have this restriction here, it would have said, for example, x is less than um, or equal to 2, which is has to say that because when x is more than 2, it's not defined. Um, if it just had this as the domain, then the range would have been y is greater than or equal to 0, basically. It would be in all the values of y going up to, because this goes on forever, increasing. Okay, however, the question told us that the domain is between minus 2 and 2, so we have to restrict the range also. Okay, so this is more kind of like a P3 type of question that you normally find in P3, but of course P4 and P3, uh, P3 questions can come up in P4. There's no um, issue with that. Okay, so thank you for watching. That's the answer to this question. And we have, as I said, other questions from this paper can be found by clicking on the link over here. Other questions about this topic about parametric equations and integration can be found in this um, by clicking on this link here. Subscribe to my channel by clicking on this icon and you will find other papers that I've gone through. P1, P2, P3, FM1, S1 papers as well as some IGCSE papers in the description under the video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.